So this is a, a tricky case for a primary stay piece operation. What we have here for the left here, so this is 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 and 9. We can see a really, really decent uh, fascia nerve. We have some fibrous tissue covering the fascia nerve here, so I just need to remove that. And you can see here a complete connection between the fascia nerve, which is completely decent, and the, and the stapes. So, of course, the problem will be to remove the stapes superstructure. Uh, the first step here, anyway, is to remove the superstructure. So we'll see that. So first, I'm, I'm going to separate the incus from the stapes, as usual, to check the ossicular chain mobility. We need to rule out malice and incus problem. And checking, of course, the stapes fixation to ensure that the stapes is completely fixed. So I'm now using this joint knife. And now I'm going to check first the malleus incus mobility. So I will, you see the quarter tympani is overstretched, but it was really difficult to make a nice approach. So I'm going to check malleus incus, which is nearly, is a little slight decrease, but I think it's fine. We will see later. And the stapes is completely fixed. All right, so the next step here is to remove the stapes superstructure. Um, so first, I will cut the, the stapes tendon. Alors, on va essayer quand même. Mettez-moi un peu la tête en déclive pour voir. Stop. All right, the, fir the point here, what we have is a exposure of the posterior cruise, which is not so bad. Um, the, arm, the, the, the main problem will be for the anterior cruise, which is completely hidden. So I'm going to use now the micro drill with the 0.7 millimeter diamond dust burr. So I know that I must stay in this position, avoiding the facial nerve. So of course, I take my time leaving the diamond dust doing job by itself without any uh, pressure. I'm not in contact with the fascia nerve, so it's fine. There we go. Now the posterior cruise has been cut. So now I need to cut the anterior cruise, but I need to check the connection between the fascia nerve and the stapes. Can it possible play? I need to understand how it goes like this. See how connected it is. But if I do it gently, it's going to be fine. Because in fact, I will drill out the anterior cruise. But the problem, I don't want to overstretch the fascia nerve. OK, all is fine. I don't have access to the anterior cruise. Let's see if I can access with the macro drill anterior to the superstructure. See if I can co connect it, but I don't think I can. There's no possibility here. So the only way is to dr drill out like this. From posterior to anterior. Okay, it's done. Now I can remove the superstructure. So you, you notice that I was able to dislocate a little bit the uh, superstructure, avoiding the contact with the fascia nerve. And now I can remove this superstructure, which is good that we had a really thin anterior cruise. Otherwise, it would have been difficult to do it. Now, of course, the problem that we have is I don't have a clear access to the uh, full plate. And I will need to check again the malus incus mobility because I had some feeling that there was a slight decrease in terms of uh, malus mobility. It was not completely clear. Um, I will measure now, but I will have to measure again after that. I need to check. Mesureur. So it's a 4.5 millimeter long. So let me see what's going on with the malleus, because I think there is not a clear mobility of the malleus, can it? So I will check again. 
Oh, now it's fine. There's no problem with that. So I need to use now the macro drill uh, to have the possibility to access the foot plate. Multilateral. We're going to move uh, the table more on hyperextension. The problem, I cannot put the head on hyperextension because this patient has a neck problem. So I need to move the, comp the entire table. Allez-y. Allez-y encore. Ok, allez-y. En bas maintenant. Déclive. La table en déclive. Alright, so I'm going to move the table down and down. And then hyperextension of the whole body and not the head. Encore, 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 encore. Encore. Stop. Try to have a better access to the foot plate, which is going to be tricky anyway. Uh, aspiration, s'il vous plaît. Still quite tricky here, as you can see. Because I don't have a clear vision of the foot plate, so that's the problem. I have some bleeding coming up from the from the canal, so I need to check that before. Ok, alors la fraise avec un œuf du jour tient de venir. Oh là, ça saigne. I have some bleeding here, so I cannot do it now. I need to wait a little bit. It was not bleeding before, but now it's bleeding, so it's pretty, pretty bad. The bleeding is right here, in fact. important that we stop that because it will hide uh, a lot of a uh, part of the of the access can they see the d'abord so you see we have some residual posterior <coughs> cruise i'm going to check if i can remove it it will give me some more uh, yeah i think i can do it so it's fine it will help me to have a better access if i remove that part which is fine here now better Enough, okay. Okay, fine. Now it's good. Alors, la fraise. So now what I'm going to do, c'est un oeuf, hein, je crois. I'm going to drill out a little bit of promontory in order to have a, a better access to the foot plate. So I'm staying perpendicular to the promontory, as you can see, just leaving the diamond there doing the job. And you see, of course, I stay away from the fascia nerve. I have some residual anterior cruise, I think, here. So again, it's better to try to remove them, because it gives you gives us more a better view, I would say. So it's getting slightly better and better, but it's not that good still. On va donner une, on va mettre une bucket là en, en titane. So the only way here is to use the bucket prosthesis, the bucket type prosthesis. Because as you can see, if I use a regular cross piston, then the shaft will be in very close contact to the fascia nerve, and I don't want that. So I prefer to use a bucket prosthesis. In the past, I was having a very nice bucket prosthesis made in uh, Teflon. We don't have it anymore. They don't make it anymore. So we had to move on to the uh, bucket prosthesis made in titanium, which is going to be fine. But the problem is I cannot cut it accordingly, so I need to use it and, and choose the right length. So I measured 4.5, so I'm going to use a 4 millimeter long uh, titanium bucket prosthesis. All right, so let's start now with the... Uh, il faut bien, bien tenir devant pour, pour me... Let's start now with the drilling out of the, pro, of the stapedotomy. Oui. Uh, 
Il n'y a que ces deux-là pour ouais. l'instant. Bon, 3,75. We're going to try with the 3,75 and see how it goes. Otherwise, I will have to use uh, uh, a regular cost piston. Okay. So it's a tree, very tricky case, so we have plenty of time, I just need to... So I need to do it very gently, step by step. Okay, I think it's done. La fraise encore. I need to enlarge it a little bit more. There we go. Now it's fine. All right. You want to put the, the vein graft now with the uh, 0.9 millimeter sucker, which is the vein I took at the beginning of the operation. Uh, as usual, from the dorsal face of the hand, so we are facing now the intima of the vein. And on the other side, we have the uh, adventitial side, which is, of course, the sticky side, which should go on the full plate. So I need to use uh, the, the sucker on my left hand and the needle on my right hand to control and stretch the vein. It's pretty, pretty dry as you can see but it's gonna, it's gonna go much better soon. gonna go wet by itself but I don't want to make it too wet I'm gonna take my time like this so now it's it goes it, it goes down you see the vein is there over the uh, fenestra anyway you can see the position of the fenestra which is right here so let's try with the uh, new titanium um, bucket prosthesis which I don't like too much because as I said this is made in titanium but we will try. And if not, then I will try with the uh, cost piston. All right, on you have. Let's get it. There we go. Okay. So you see, we have the, uh, the opening of the head but I need to uh, open it a little bit more. And this is a new shape, which I don't like at all, because it's not going to work like this. Um, I need to remove this part here, otherwise it's not going to go in. So let's go, let's go there like this. I need to put this, uh, uh, loop here on the other side and then I don't need this uh, donnez moi uh, crochet au spora. I don't I don't need this entire part of, uh, of this one so we try to push it like this and then previous one what we, we had before it was much better much 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 better but anyway that's the only one we have now because they don't make it anymore so let's go and try to insert it now and see how it goes
All right, the introduction will be the same technique, of course. I will hold the prosthesis with the sucker like this and put the shaft down in the fenestra. Okay, there we go. Can this, s'il vous plaît? All right, now I need to rotate the prosthesis in order to place the, the, the anterior part of the prosthesis in front of the lenticular process. Which is not easy, because I don't want to have too much contact with the fascia nerve, because it's not titanium again. It's not Teflon, I mean, again. So this is titanium, as we know, Teflon doesn't make any problem uh, with the fascia nerve, but titanium could create some irritation, so I don't like that. So I, I try to make it step by step, first rotating it like this. That's it. And now we will place the incus within the within the hollow head of the prosthesis. Okay, it's going to be tricky. There we go. It's not bad. And I want to ensure the connection with the with the loop. Looks fine because I don't have a direct contact, which is very pretty good at the moment. Okay, let me see can lay. There we go. You see the distal tip of the shaft, which seems to be quite in good condition. So we will see that, how it works. I hope it's going to work and see from the malice that it's working fine. Okay. All right. So we'll keep it like this and we'll see. The good, the good prosthesis, but not as good as before. So that's a shame that the uh, uh, company decided to stop it. It was uh, Richard company who made the, the Teflon one. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to put the, the mirror cell now here in the ear canal and then see um, after three months if it's going up in terms of hearing improvement, of course. We will see. I, I have some doubts because I'm not absolutely sure about the connection. It was not possible to check. Of course, the bending sign because it's not like Teflon. So let's see. I mean, the perfect length would have been four in my hand, but in my mind. But uh, we have only 3.75. As I said, we cannot adapt the, the procedure's length to a specific case because this is what was the length that we have produced by the company, which is a shame. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see about the result later. Thank you. Bye bye.